The War of the Worlds was the biggest hit of 1953 and won an Academy Award for Best Visual Effects. So finding Goose wasn't easy, but I found a few from this classic sci-fi movie. They gotta be stopped! And I even explore why a popular goof wasn't really a goof originally. The Martians are coming this way. And after that, stay tuned for uh, some very interesting trivia from The War of the Worlds. A movie that paved the way for sci-fi films for years to come. Let's start out with this funny, slightly mysterious goof. I actually saw this on another YouTube video, but I think their conclusion was wrong. I'll show you what I found and see what you think. This scene involves a forest ranger delivering a message that a meteor is hit to a group of scientists out camping, one of which is the main character, Dr. Clayton Forrester, played by Gene Barry. About 10 or 12 miles from here, over by Linda Rosa. Are they sure it's a meteor? As I mentioned, another YouTuber thought that the ranger whose mouth was filled with bread accidentally spat out a piece of bread into the pocket of the man's to your left, but I don't think that's exactly what happened. The look on the actor's face as he stares down with a smile definitely shows that something funny is going on, but it looks like a piece of bread shooting out of the ranger's mouth actually may have had more of a chance of hitting the flannel guy's lap. Maybe that's what he was looking down at. Over by Linda Rosa. As I was looking here though, I, I noticed something else as well. Notice just a few seconds later the ranger reaches for a cigarette from the flannel guy's shirt pocket. Now it could be, I mean it just could be, because it's kind of hard to tell with that flannel that maybe the cigarettes that the actor knew was going to be uh, important in the next couple of seconds weren't there in his pocket. So what do y'all think? Was he looking for missing cigarettes or was he looking at the food that the other guy spit on his lap? No, I'll smoke it later. I think the ranger was cracking the other guy up. Notice when, he, uh, when the ranger sticks the cigarette behind his ear, it falls down to the ground. Modern viewers often complain that the wires used to suspend the Martian ships are plainly visible throughout the film. According to what I researched and read, the film was originally shot in three-strip Technicolor with prints made using a dye transfer process that resulted in very saturated colors but with a slight reduction in overall resolution. This reduction in resolution fuzzed out the wires in the original prints, making them invisible. So in 1953, when moviegoers first saw The War of the Worlds on the big screen, they never saw any wires. But later on in the 1960s, they used Eastman color prints, which yielded sharper images of the movie, but also had the side effect of making the wires visible. In 2018, when the movie was restored digitally, they softened the image enough to hide the lines once more. So technically, there was a goof, but it happened after the movie had been out for a few years, not during the original production, as it was the practice back then not to spend money hiding things that wouldn't be seen anyway at the time. I think we should try to make them understand we mean them no harm. No real attempt has been made to communicate with them, you know? Every movie has uh, that one little thing in the story sometimes that kind of sticks in your craw. In this movie, it's one of the early scenes involving the preacher Uncle Matthew. What's he think he's doing? Now, the movie overall is pretty respectful to Christians and God in general. I read that was common for producer uh, George Powell's films. At least that's what I read. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. But uh, this one scene with Sylvia's Uncle Matthew is uh, very stereotypical of Hollywood's depictions of preachers. You know, always acting as though they didn't have much common sense. In it, Matthew decides that there had not been any attempts to communicate with the Martians. This is after we saw the Martians zap a few guys already in oblivion, and the military was all set up ready to attack the Martians. So he decides the smart thing to do is walk right up to the Martians, and he's quoting Psalm 23 by King David, the Lord is my shepherd chapter. Uh, of course, maybe it was meant to show the preacher's courage, but to me, no preacher that I've ever seen would walk right up to a bunch of deadly Martians without a shotgun in one hand and a Bible in the other. Uh, I guess he had a Bible. Now, by the 1950s, the strategy of using Air Force before using ground forces had been standard practice. And but in the movie, they did it in they did it backwards. The, uh, the ground forces attack, and then the Air Force comes in.
Now, for the scene where they set off the, the atomic bomb against the Martians, they must have been using one huge wind machine. Notice as the stuntman falls off the truck, the wind blows away a mattress that was likely there for the stuntman to fall on. Boy, that must have hurt. See if you can find anything off in this plane crash goof. Keep your eye on the back of the plane that Forrester is piloting. Do you see it? It looks like there's a rope attached to the tail and they're pulling the plane to the side to make it look like it's crashing. When Dr. Forrester and Sylvia are trapped in a farmhouse, Forrester uses an axe to chop off a Martian electronic eye. And the eye falls apart. However, a few seconds later, when he lifts the eye, it's intact and looks brand new. This is an electronic eye. The Martians modeled it after their own eye. People in town started to follow us. Don't let them come anywhere near here. Okay, now let's look at some amazingly cool, fun trivia facts. Of course, The War of the Worlds movie was based on the novel written by H.G. Wells, published way back in 1898. The estate of H.G. Wells was so pleased with the final production that it offered the producer, George Powell, his choice of any other Wells property. He chose The Time Machine, which was made in 1960. The Los Angeles City Hall building was destroyed in miniature form on The War of the Worlds. It has been used on many TV shows and movies, including as the Daily Planet building on the Adventures of Superman TV series of the 1950s. Is that a fireball or something? Boy, that's big. The movie features a younger Alvy Moore from Green Acres. You know him as Hank Kimball. Mr. Kimball! My father nearly fell off the ladder when he eloped with, uh, uh... They'll be moving on Los Angeles now. We'll establish a line and fight them all the way back to the mountains. The General was played by Les Tremaine, who also played Mentor on the 70s Shazam TV series. Billy, be careful about letting your emotions cloud your reason. What is that gizmo? You think that gizmo is a machine from another planet? Gene Berry played Dr. Clayton Forrester. Classic TV fans know him from shows like Burke's Law and Bat Masterson. Anne Robinson reprised her role as Sylvia Van Buren for the 1988 War of the Worlds TV series for three episodes. She also played a grandma on the 2005 War of the Worlds movie that starred Tom Cruise, and Jean Barry was credited as a grandfather. The setting of the movie is changed from the novel's Victorian-era England to 1953 Southern California. In 2011, it was selected for preservation in the National Film Registry by the United States Library of Congress. If you're a big fan of War of the Worlds and maybe Superman, you might like my short fan film I put together the other day featuring the 50 Superman George Reeves in a War of the Worlds imaginary battle. It also includes Batman. I'll put a link to it at the end of the video. And check out my TV Crazy Man channel for all kinds of classic TV goofs and fun facts. I also have a slightly newer channel I'm working on and incorporates my own animated characters in my videos called the Freddy Cat Cartoons channel. The latest, I mixed my cartoon ninja cat claw with an old Popeye the Sailor Man cartoon. Check it out if you get a chance and please subscribe and watch the rest of the TV Crazy Man videos. Dedicated to classic pop culture and great memories of when TV was cool.